New Jersey truly was the crossroads of the American Revolution. Situated between Philadelphia, where the Patriots were based, and New York, the British headquarters. There were around 300 or more battles and skirmishes that took place in New Jersey. George Washington spent more time in New Jersey than any other state. In 2026, the United States will celebrate its 250th birthday, giving New Jersey Historical Commission and Crossroads of the American Revolution an opportunity to tell the story of the American Revolution in the state. In 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed, but the war wasn't over. New Jersey was a very divided state during the American Revolution. There were many who supported the revolution, there were many who wanted to remain loyal to the British crown. Architect John Hatch and his team are part of this public-private partnership. They're in the process of visiting 140 American Revolutionary War sites in the state to do the first comprehensive assessment, essentially making sure everything is ready for tourists. The team met in Trenton for a walking tour. Uh, we're already starting to see some really great stories and combinations of sites and, and, uh, and trips that people can take that will really bring the revolution uh, to life. Our trip started at the William Trent House. During the Revolutionary War, the first owner, Dr. William Bryant, was actually a loyalist. He was a, a surgeon and, um, and he served both uh, wounded continental you know, American soldiers and, and British soldiers. And when he was kind of forced out of Trenton, as, as Trent became more uh, patriotic, let's say, uh, the next owner was uh, Colonel John Cox, who was actually a deb deputy quartermaster for the Continental Army. This estate ended up being uh, a supply depot for the Continental Army. Where we're going right now is the old barracks museum, which was a barracks built for the French and Indian War and then was used by the Hessians um, as barracks at the beginning of the Revolution. We walked to St. Michael's Church next. It was an Episcopal church, it was an Anglican church, and actually was pretty evenly just uh, divided between patriots and, um, and loyalists, so it actually closed uh, during the Revolutionary War um, because they couldn't decide how to, how to deal with that. In the distance, Hatch pointed to the Trenton Battle Monument commemorating the first Battle of Trenton. So the image that everybody sees or thinks of is, is Washington crossing the Delaware. So that just happened a few miles up the Delaware on the way to Lambertville. Christmas night, 1776, um, Washington led um, the Continental Army uh, to Trenton to surprise the Hessian troops that were stationed here. It was the first major victory in the Revolutionary War. As we continued walking, Hatch pointed out a mural. It marks the location of the second public reading of the Declaration of Independence. We made our way to Mill Hill Park, where the Second Battle of Trenton is commemorated. Just a few days after the first battle, uh, George Washington had regrouped um, the Continental Army and decided that he needed to follow up that first great victory with further action and hopefully another victory. So he was, he crossed back over the Delaware. George Washington set up the Continental Army just on the other side of the creek. And Lord Cornwallis tried to cross over the creek three ta times, and three times his troops were repulsed. The British Army settled for the night and planned to attack Washington in the morning. Washington managed to sneak out of Trenton with his troops. They made their way to Princeton Battlefield and won their third victory in those 10 crucial days. If things did not happen in the Battle of Trenton, in the Battle of Princeton, um, you know, who knows where the revolution would have, would have ended. After learning the history in Trenton, it led us here to Princeton. We saw the battlefield and then we came here to this home, the home of Richard Stockton. He was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence and it's now a museum. The state is holding a logo contest to commemorate the 250th anniversary called Engage the Past, Shape the Future. New Jersey students and graphic artists can submit ideas until November 25th. The winner will be announced during Patriots Week. In Princeton, I'm Leah Mishkin for NJTV News.